Nice collection, eh? We got our share and more. More than we thought we'd get when we joined the 43rd early in 1941. What does it take to get a Purple Heart? General Washington said it takes valor. Our ancestors showed plenty of valor in the Revolutionary War, the Civil War, the Spanish-American War, in World War I. Only they weren't called the 43rd then. There were only a few regiments of civilian soldiers, volunteers of the New England National Guard from Maine, Vermont, Connecticut, and Rhode Island. The 103rd Infantry, the 169th Infantry, and the 172nd Infantry. Some of them with history dating back more than 100 years. That was long before they called us the Winged Victory Division. Let's be frank. Back in 1941, it didn't look like much of a victory, and we didn't look much like the division which was later called one of the finest commands in the Pacific. We used rubber balloons for guns and learned to paint the words machine gun instead of knocking one out. And speaking of wing victory, we didn't feel as if we had wings. Our feet hurt too much from marching, running, jumping, climbing. First in Camp Landing, Florida. Then in Camp Shelby, Mississippi. General Hester, who was the boss of our outfit then, wasn't too happy about it. But when we left the States in October 1942, they gave us plenty of everything. Remember the phrase, arsenal of democracy? We must have half emptied it. Of course, we felt sort of strange when we moved through the Golden Gate. After all, we were still just a bunch of civilians in uniform. But there was also a feeling of excitement. combat team was on the ill-fated President Coolidge, which was sunk at Espirito Santo in the Hebrides, while the rest of us were kept as strategic reserve in New Caledonia, as a sort of welcoming committee for the Japs, should they decide to pay us a visit. Strategic reserve, my eye, was just another word for training, for crawling in the dirt. And brother, we practically ate that dirt. We were getting tough and ready. When the Japs sent word they were too busy to keep our date, we moved up from New Caledonia. In February 1943, on the way to Guadalcanal, we started our collection of medals. The Japs sent us greetings by plane and torpedo, but by and large, it was only a mopping up operation putting the finishing touches on a good job started by the Marines. We got our first medals for valor and wounds. Next, we invaded the Russell Islands in 1943. It wasn't much of an invasion, but it was worth the experience. It was a good rehearsal for our next job. Reorganized as a task force under General Hester, we were supposed to land on Randova Island together with elements of the Navy and Marine Corps. Funny what kind of thoughts go through your head once you know there's nothing between you and that coastline but a prayer. Advancing under fire. Establishing a beachhead. Unloading equipment. 
with those devils dropping hell on you. Backed by Navy support, we consolidated our position on Mendova Island and sat down for a few minutes to have some chow. Then the order came to move across the channel to Munda Airfield. Maybe I feel a little bitter about Munda Airfield. For 31 days we bled for every inch we advanced, moving through rain and mud, fighting against heavily fortified and camouflaged positions. Munda Airfield brings back some bitter memories. We got quite a number of medals for valor and wounds. But Munda was ours, repaired and enlarged as a base for our planes. And so was Arundel Island, after 50 more days of sweat and blood. They took us to New Zealand to forget all about it. fellow had a chance to relax a little in those days. We played a little too. Although we knew darn well it wouldn't last long when replacements started coming, it meant we were getting ready for a new mission. Red Wing was now our boss, a tough soldier graduated from the Doefoots. He was the one who gave us that name, the Wing Victory Division. The funniest name a bunch of doughboys ever had. We sure did that name proud when we landed at Itapi in July 1944. The landing itself was easy, but there were some fireworks after we landed. Plenty of fireworks. There were 80,000 Japs and only 20,000 of us. But our equipment was good and so was our morale. The Japs must have thought we were crazy, but we kept going. They attacked us across the Drinamore. That's the name of a river. You had to be quite a linguist to tell where your buddy fell. Don't worry, our Japanese friends learned in a hurry to understand the language of our guns. We smoked them out of their holes like rats. And we kept going sort of a constitutional, you might say, with a shower every day and a beauty nap after lunch, mud pack and all. Things sort of eased up when Christmas came around, or so we thought. It was the third Christmas we had spent away from home. The third Christmas. For many of us, the last. On New Year's Eve, we were on our way to the Philippines as part of the invasion force. Yes, we made a number of New Year's resolutions. Number one was we were going to land on Lingayan Gulf, Luzon. It was the kind of a campaign that sticks in your memory, the kind you keep dreaming about long after it's over. Some dreams. We'll never forget those kamikazes. The first troops landed on the morning of January 9th with orders to seize the left flank in order to block off the Japanese in the mountains of Baguio. We 
had to slug it out inch by inch over mountains, rivers, swamps, jungles. Then our wings carried us south to Fort Stotzenberg, which we helped liberate. But we didn't have time to stay for the ceremony, for we were doing our share at Clark Field and the rugged mountains that flanked the field on the north. The boys who keep the records will tell you we killed more Japs than all the other divisions that fought on Luzon. But don't let anybody tell you we were the only ones who did the fighting. We would have been lost in the Sambales Mountains without the guerrillas and the native scout troops. The Japs were getting desperate, but nobody could stop us now. We moved south and tackled the famous Shimbu line at Antipola, east of Manila, sweeping to a junction with the 1st Cavalry Division southeast of Laguna Dubai. Then to Ipo Dam, which was the main source of Manila's water supply. We blasted the Shinsu Fortress and secured Ipo Dam intact. Then we were yanked out for a rest, but our biggest job lay yet ahead, the invasion of the Japanese homeland. However, before we could get going again, a little gadget called the atom bomb brought peace. We put in a stretch as occupation troops in Japan. We were back at swinging a stick instead of a bayonet. Finally, we started on our voyage home. through the Golden Gate. Three years older, years wiser. Minus many of our buddies, plus a lot of medals. The voices that cheered us in San Francisco were the voices of America. The America we had fought for in four campaigns that won us two Congressional Medals of Honor, one Distinguished Service Medal, 75 Distinguished Service Crosses, and a collection of silver stars and purple hearts. We were a happy bunch of soldiers. We had done our job in the bloodiest war of history, and we had done it well. And now we are home again. New England, once again a part of the National Guard. Citizen soldiers, ready to serve our country whenever we are needed whenever we are called.